At the close of 2022, 2023 was anticipated to be a blockbuster year with new powerful vehicles in space. From Starship to Starliner and more missions to the moon, we expected a record-setting year for space launches. Sadly, the launch time has been pushed back one by one. And more recently, Dream Chaser has been delayed once again. This raises serious questions about Vulcan launch plans. Is there still a path to Vulcan flying a national security mission in 2023? Let's take a look at the details in today's episode of Alpha Tech. The long-awaited debut of a winged space plane will have to wait a little longer. This week, NASA updated its internal schedule to show that Sierra Space's Dream Chaser spacecraft will now berth at the International Space Station no earlier than December 17th of 2023. Previously, Sierra Space had been publicly targeting a launch of Dream Chaser in August on board United Launch Alliance's new Vulcan rocket. In a statement, Sierra Space confirmed the delay. Sierra Space's plan is to complete the first launch of Dream Chaser by the end of the fourth quarter this year, the company said. The latest delay will cause mild concern for NASA as it means that beginning this summer, the US segment of the space station will be reliant on the Falcon 9 rocket alone for cargo supply missions. This is because in addition to ferrying SpaceX's Cargo Dragon to the station, Northrop Grumman's cargo carrying Cygnus will start launching on the Falcon 9 later this year. Northrop needed to find an alternative rocket for Cygnus after the Russian-made engines for its Antares 230 Plus were no longer available in the wake of the Ukraine war. The Falcon 9 was the only US rocket available and it will take a couple of years to develop a replacement launch vehicle. So, until Dream Chaser starts flying on Vulcan, if NASA's astronauts want to dine, they'll need to be door dashing on the Falcon 9. The bigger issue Dream Chaser's latest and quite possibly not final delay raises is its own downstream impacts on the launch manifest of the much anticipated Vulcan rocket. ULA is intent on flying two certification missions of the large rocket so it can complete paperwork for the US Space Force and begin launching lucrative missions for the military. The company was supposed to start doing so last year and has started to come under significant pressure from Space Force officials to deliver. The US military is United Launch Alliance's most important customer. The nominal plan for these certification launches entails flying Astrobotics Lunar Lander on the CERT-1 mission in May and Dream Chaser on CERT-2 in August. During a teleconference with reporters about a month ago, United Launch Alliance CEO Tori Bruno insisted that this schedule would allow Vulcan to become certified and fly its first national security mission at the end of the year out in quarter four. Yet on this nominal plan, if Astrobotic flies in May and Dream Chaser is not scheduled to fly until December, there would be no chance to fly a national security mission in 2023. After the second certification mission, there will need to be, at minimum, a few months of time for the government to analyze data and declare Vulcan fit for high-value, high-performance missions. Jessica Rye, a spokesperson for United Launch Alliance, said the company remains committed to flying a national security mission in 2023. In our history and as part of our culture, we have always been focused first and foremost on our customer's mission and have worked with all customers if there are delays due to payload readiness, she said. We will remain flexible as long as we can for Sierra Space to be ready to fly. If our customer encounters difficulty meeting our plan, we have provisions for a mass simulator as an alternative and are committed to ensuring that we complete U.S. Space Force certification of Vulcan in advance of our first national security space mission in the fourth quarter of 2023. So what happens next? A reasonable guess is that the CERT-1 mission scheduled for May 4th, which is just six weeks from now, will be delayed. A source said that Astrobotic has completed engine testing on its Peregrine Lunar Lander and that the vehicle is nearly ready to go. Therefore, the pacing item for Vulcan's debut launch now appears to be the rocket itself. 
not its payload. United Launch Alliance has been conducting propellant loading tests on the rocket in recent weeks in advance of a wet dress rehearsal and a static fire test. On Twitter Thursday, Bruno said the first stage has performed well during these tests, but suggested there may have been some slight issues with the Centaur upper stage and ground systems. There was some learning specific to the ground system. We are tuning up some procedures and software to have that all in place for the wet dress rehearsal. Given the work remaining to complete preparations for the CERP-1 mission, it is probable that the debut launch slips into this summer, perhaps July or August. We can expect United Launch Alliance to set a launch date with confidence after the static fire test, which it is calling a flight readiness firing. Rai said that the CERT-2 mission will fly just a few months after the first Vulcan mission. This further cements the fourth quarter of 2023 as the date. And if Dream Chaser is well and truly ready, it will still probably fly on this second flight in December. If development of the space plane slips further, then United Launch Alliance may launch a mass simulator. What seems highly improbable is that the Vulcan will complete two certification flights this summer and fall and can also launch a national security mission before the end of the year. Finally, back to the problem we mentioned at the beginning, why rocket launches always get delayed. Indeed, the rocket itself is an engineering marvel whose complexity is on par with the human body, yet much more delicate. A single mechanical issue can threaten the safety of the entire rocket and prevent a mission from making it into space. For example, improper fueling procedures could create an unintended volatile reaction that creates combustion, as it happened to SpaceX back in 2016. A faulty steel strut meant to secure a canister of helium was the likely cause of the company's in-flight explosion in 2015. Before Challenger, the most devastating launch-related disaster for NASA was Apollo 1 in 1967, when an electrical fire during a launch pad test claimed the lives of all three crew members. Up until the last few seconds of any launch, thousands upon thousands of sensors are collecting data to see whether there is anything awry inside the rocket. And if any of them detect anything that is too unusual or a sign for concern, they can automatically trigger a scrub, ensuring the safety of the rocket and the payload. And that's not even considering the importance of integrity checks and maintenance for all of the rocket parts beforehand. This isn't just to protect any crew members going into space, it's also to ensure the safety of engineers and personnel on the ground. The most severe rocket explosion resulting in non-astronaut fatalities was in Alcantara, Brazil in 2003, when the Brazilian Space Agency witnessed the detonation of a rocket during launch preparations that killed 21 and injured many more. Truly, the space industry takes the old adage, better safe than sorry to heights a few other industries need to. And that's a good thing. That just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below because everyone's support motivates us to create more quality videos like this. And for that, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.